Good morning, church family. <laughs> Welcome everybody that's here and everyone online. All the worship music is found online at calvarychapel.org. So if you want to worship with us and have the words, you can go on there and look those up and join in with us. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the ability to come into your house with your people that we can worship you openly, Lord, and pray and learn your word, Lord. We just ask that your Holy Spirit would be here in the midst of us, Lord. We ask that you would be honored and praised, Lord, and that you would receive our worship. You are amazing, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
All righty. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to Calvary Chapel Divine uh, here in Divine, Texas. Thank you, uh, Sarah, who was able to come in and do worship for us this morning. Um, and uh, we first want to say happy birthday to Forrest. It's Forrest's birthday. And so, uh, you know, birthdays are short when you're when you have to start having kids. They get less and less. I, my birthday always falls on a Monday for some reason. So I get a 45 to an hour birthday. That's usually and it's done and all. But happy birthday to you, brother. I uh, hope you have a, a wonderful, blessed day with family. And and uh, thank you so much for being here and all. God bless you. And, and, you know, praise God for Miss Diane's surgery. She's here. Everything went well. And so thank you all for praying for that. Uh, we got a couple that, uh, you know, one of the things that we've been blessed with is, is um we, we just, I just got back from the men's retreat, uh, and so next year, around this time in October, just plan to, it'll come up, and so um, probably sometime in September, um, I'll start letting y'all know about it early September, late August, so that way y'all can plan for it. Um, it I don't know if, it, has anybody ever been to, to uh, LBJ Lake? It's it's beautiful. It's it's um, to the west of Austin, and it's out beautiful. I mean, just unbelievable. Uh, uh, Camp Buckner is where we went to. It was really nice. Uh, I I was sitting there telling Court this morning. I can't believe I didn't bring my fishing pole because they had a crystal clear pond with bass stock in it, and I was we were just looking at them. Couldn't do anything else with them. So, uh, but the teaching was really good. Pastor Bill Holdridge um, from California, Cal Calvary Chapel, he led the church for 27 years, uh, turned the church over to Nate Holdridge, his son, uh, and, uh, and now he does Pomia uh, Ministries, uh, which is something that he does, and he moved here to Texas. His wife is actually from this area. Uh, and so he's here now, and he did the teaching. It was really good. I'll let y'all know when the teachings are online to check out. But, you know, just have in your head next year, because I would like for all of us to be able to go. I know it was last minute for us this year, um, but we will try to uh, be on top of that next year because we want y'all to be able to go. It's, you need that break. You need time and fellowship with, uh, with other men. And, and to be able to do some, uh, hear some solid teaching and be able to, to just spend time uh, being sewn into, uh, especially as the women's retreats, that's the same thing. It's, it's like those are breaks for mom and dad. Uh, it's funny because now all the new guys, the, the new fathers, they sleep. When they get that little break, you know, that little time of... And you can go do all the young guys are playing volleyball, basketball there. And then where are all the young fathers at? they're crashed out. You can hear them snoring in their rooms as they get their little bit of sleep. So uh, <laughs> and it's funny to watch them because I can remember when they were they were youth and then young adults. And then now they have kids and and, I'm, and they're like, man, I can't do the volleyball no more. My legs are hurting. Up. And they're, they're, the other kids were out there till three or three in the morning. And and that used to be them, you know. But once you have kids, all that you, you're man. If you can get some sleep, you take the take advantage of it. So um, tomorrow is the food bank uh, right over here at the VFW. So if you have availability, they need servants at seven o'clock. Um, that's at the first Monday of every month. So you know, if there's ever a Monday that you have off and you want to help out, Steve and them are down there. Um, at the VFW, you, you just show up at 7 o'clock, they feed you, and then y'all start serving everybody, I think, around 8.30. If you know somebody that needs uh, food or, or needs has a, uh, a need for that, the, fra the Fresh Track registration, the, the link is on the, the bulletin. And if you can register before you get there, it'll make things go so much quicker and so much smoother. And if you know somebody who needs um, food, and they don't have transportation. You can actually, uh, we can actually have it delivered. You know, somebody can come pick it up and bring it to them. And so they have families that do that. Uh, the other thing is the Cactus Fest is, believe it or not, is this weekend coming up. And the weather is going to be absolutely beautiful. It's going to be 67 degrees and sunny. Now, in the morning, uh, we have to have everything set up by 9 a.m. when the parade starts. 
So we don't start till 11 a.m., but that's the requirement for the, the Chamber of Commerce. They want everybody to be done and ready by 9 a.m. So we'll probably get here around 7.30ish. And, uh, it's, it, but the good thing with us is we don't have to deliver anything. Everything will be here. All we have to do is take it right out that door and start decorating and doing the stuff that we have to do. So it'll, it'll work out fine. Thursday, uh, the men, if y'all want to meet me here at 545, um, and, and if you got about an hour of your time, that's what I need. Uh, 545, you meet me here. We're going to go down to the storage facility. We're going to unload the storage stuff for the, the Cactus Fest to help Marcus out. And uh, Steve's going to be there from the VFW and some guys as well. And so basically all it is is the barriers and the, um, um, you know, the stuff that's needed for the Cactus Fest. It shouldn't take, he said, no more than an hour. And then on Sunday, next Sunday after church, I need some of the guys and, and also all of us actually to kind of, we're going to kind of pick up any trash out here and then take all that stuff back to the storage shed, if you can. You don't have to, but it's, if you got the availability to do it, uh, I, got, I got some guys coming from the other church to help out as well. Now, um, for us, we're, the, the kids' corner is from 11 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, if you can only serve from 11 to 1, if you can only serve from 1 to 3, if you can only serve for an hour, that's fine. It, however you can do it. And, and I, I talked to Miss Cindy last night at the birthday party. She's coming out. Oscar, one of our security guys that y'all you know, Oscar, he's coming out to help out. And so we got a big group of people from, uh, from Grace Calvary Chapel coming out as well. So it's going to be a really an awesome time because it gives them the opportunity to serve as well. And so that's what we need. Uh, last thing, uh, save the date. We got some of these cards here for Ryan Reese if you want to take some with you. Uh, they're up there. And, and just let people know that he's coming. Uh, he'll be here on November 14th at, uh, at Grace Calvary Chapel at 6 p.m. And so I'm going to be there. Um, but if you know somebody that needs to hear the gospel, you know somebody that's struggling in their faith, there comes my train, uh, that maybe just needs to be strengthened in their faith, give them one of these cards, invite them to come out. Uh, it's the book. The book, the Kill the Noise book is really good too. Um, that he just came out with and and so he's going to be speaking at 6 p.m. at Grace Calvary Chapel uh, Tides and offering uh, the box is in the back It's for you know between you and the Lord and then also online You can do it through Calvary Chapel uh, on the website at calvarydivine.org Let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. We're going to be in Mark chapter 7 verses 24 through 30 uh, Mark chapter 7 verses 24 through 30 and let's go ahead and read it it says, And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now this woman was a Gentile Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Little... Uh, let, their, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it uh, to the dogs. But she answered him and, and answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you have made for this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter, and she went home and found the child lying in the bed. And the demon gone. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for uh, today's word. Uh, we do pray for uh, today's study. We, we look and seek, Lord, for application. We thank you so much just for, uh, for all that you're doing uh, in divine, uh, in this building, and through this church, Lord. We pray that you would just continue to grow us uh, spiritually and um, allow us to, to keep the faith and, and keep moving forward. Uh, we thank you so much, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I entitled this very simply, Yet He Could Not Be Hidden. Yet He Could Not Be Hidden. We'll look at it in three verses and three parts. In uh, verses 24 through 25, a woman seeks Jesus. In verses 26 and 27, the woman begs Jesus. And then verses 28 and 30, a woman answered Jesus, and Jesus heals 
the child. And so last week we spoke about the, the heart of man. We spoke about the defilement and, and, and God uh, th- uh, through Jesus Christ listed 13 specific sins. And, and he told the, the, the disciples, you know, not to keep the man-made as far as the man-made traditions will not save you. Uh, it's what comes out of the heart is what defiles a man. And so, it, again, it was a new teaching. And everything leading up from Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 23, actually deals with the clean and unclean foods. Because remember, he tells them, uh, you know, you can... you. Everything is, is, is un, you know, that is unclean is clean to eat. It's, these are the traditions that y'all are holding on to. And there were uh, a religious attitude and concerns about unwashed hands. It's like if you didn't wash your hands before you eat, you weren't going to heaven. And that's how the scribes and the Pharisees would see it. And then there was the, the, the lessons that the disciples, he was teaching them that all foods were clean. But we also see what we're going to see today as we go through the Scriptures today is that it's going to deal with clean and unclean people. Right? Clean and unclean people. He's fixing to let them know they all need Jesus, right? Uh, And and so it's going to go against everything that they have been taught because they were taught that if you were a Gentile and, uh, and uncircumcised, you were never going to be able to receive God. And then on top of it, you have a, a Gentile woman. You know, a woman during those times was a low position. Uh, and Jesus was elevating that. And, and, but at the same time, uh, in the Jewish culture, and we saw this at the, at, uh, uh, this past weekend. I was telling my son about this. And, you know, in, in that culture, the women walk from behind. They're always, they don't, it's just the culture. And, and, and it's like, at the end of the day, it's like Jesus elevated that. And, 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 you know, it deals with, one, the disciples would not even talk to her. The religious leaders would not even talk to her because she was a woman. Now add that she's a Gentile on top of that. So it, that's what we're going to look at today. So what the disciples are going to learn is that Gentiles are clean today. That they're clean, and, and that's what Jesus is going to deal with. Let's look as, as the woman seeks Jesus in verse 24. It says, And from here he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. So Tyre and, uh, and, and this area of Sidon is actually near Lebanon, and, and you know it is probably actually the furthest that Jesus has gone away from uh, the Jewish nation. He's actually entering Gentile territory. And, and so, um, for, you know, for them, that, this would have been a no-no for the disciples. They would have never went into this area. And Jesus is trying to get away, and that's what we'll find out. But this area is actually known for their false gods and their, and their, uh, their, their rituals to, to gods. And it tells us a little bit more in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 in the Synoptic Gospel. It says, And behold, a Canaanite woman. So she was a Canaanite woman. And we know that, that God had, had specifically told them to be careful of the Canaanites when they were entering into uh, the Promised Land. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, it says, You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are around you, for the Lord your God is in your midst as a jealous God, lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you and He destroy you from off the face of the earth. And we know that they did, the Israelites chased after the false gods over and over again. And, and we know today that, that we struggle in, with the same thing, with idols. And we have to be very careful with ourselves worshiping idols and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, it says, No, I imply what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons, not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. It's a funny scripture on Halloween, right? You know, that's why, you ever wonder why churches do Harvest Fest or Fall Fest? Or I think if you need somewhere to go for that's, that's going to be biblical, 
Grace Calvary Chapel is doing a, a go and glow, and it's they're going to have bouncy houses, hot dogs, candy, everything for them. But they're going to teach them about God in the process. And so, you know, that's why we don't involve ourselves with, you know, and, and that's, everybody gets to that in their own, you know, because I remember when we first came to know faith, we were young in the faith. We still took our kids trick-or-treating. And it wasn't until we started reading more of the scripture, then we started going, oh, well, maybe we should stop <laughs> doing that. And then we started going to the fall festivals that they would have or the harvest festivals and, and participated in that and, and, and then started serving in those, and which is an amazing thing because that's a great way to reach the lost. People come for candy. You tell people they're going to get a free hot dog and some candy, man, they'll show up all day long. You know, and so that's a great way to minister to people. So um, one of the things we, we, we have to look at is, is this area of Tyree and Sidon is actually the area where the, the most evil woman in the Bible, Queen Jezebel, is from. So that tells you how bad the worship was in this area. Because uh, we know in 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 31 and 32, it says, And as if it had been a light thing from him to walk in sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he took for his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethabal, um, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. And so we see that the Israelites had flirted with false idols and worshipped to them. Not only worshipped, but married a Gentile. Which God said back in Deuteronomy what not to do. Right? But they did it. And so this is the area that we're at. This is the area we're at. And we also know that in the prophets, they prophesied about uh, Tyree. Because Tyree had actually... Um, contributed and, and laughed at the calamity that happened to Israelites. And so Ezekiel chapter 26, verse 3, it says, Therefore thus says the Lord, God, behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and I will bring up many nations against you as the sea brings up its waves. And so this is the area that Jesus goes to. Right? An area that a Jew would not be anywhere found to be. And one of the things I love in the next verse, it says, And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And it, this is important. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know. He's, he's, you have to understand. Remember, the crowds are following him. Where is he going to go? Where the Jews won't. So he can, he can, he can but guess what's going to happen? The next verse tells you, yet he could not be hidden. He could not be hidden. The, the, the word of, of what Jesus has done, remember we learned about that in the book of Mark at the very beginning, the fame had spread. And they already started learning about His public ministry already. But it couldn't be hidden. In, first, uh, or in John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, True light which gives light to the everyone uh, was coming into the world, and He cannot be hidden. So you seek and you shall find Him. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. He cannot be hidden. Christ dwells in us. In John chapter 12, verse 36, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed, from, uh, departed and hid himself from them. He's saying, look, you, even though I'm not here, I still can't be hidden because you're the believer and I'm in you. And that light needs to go out. And, and so I think one of the things that is very important for us is, is that it, are we hiding that from others? Right? Do people know that we're actually Christians? Uh, are, are, you know, are, are, are you keeping that to yourself? Because that's not what's supposed to happen. It tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 11, you know, everyone will know who Jesus is, even though they think as an unbeliever that, you know, I don't have to believe or I, 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 don't, I, don't, I need to see Jesus in order to believe. Well, guess what's going to happen? They will. It says, therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed him a, 
a name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 11 through 15, it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, from his presence earth and, fly, uh, and sky fled, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open, and then another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Uh, the de then death and Hades were thrown into the uh, lake of fire, and the second death, the lake of fire, and if anyone na anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So, even though you don't want nothing to do with Jesus at some point, right? We know people that are like that. He's not going to be hidden. Even if you decide that you're not going to follow him, he's not going to be hidden. You'll face him. And that's why it's important for us. Remember that you that God is, is put, we're, we're supposed to be the, the salt and the light. You know, uh, when, when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, Christ is residing in you and you're supposed to be the light. And, and so it shouldn't be hidden in you either. People should know you by your faith. They should say, man, that, that dude's a, a, that he believes in Jesus. Or she believes in Jesus. And, and, and honestly, it should be known within our families and our marriages. You know, uh, it says, But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. And so the child is desperate and anyone who's a mom or, or a dad who has kids, when your kids are sick, you're desperate to try to make sure they get better. Um, and that's the thing that she's doing is she's begging, she's pleading. In Matthew 15, verse 24, it's, uh, 23, it says, But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. Now, the word here for crying is actually she was crying out in lament. Or she was, uh, she was a passionate expression of sorrow. That's how bad it was hurting her that her daughter was demonically possessed. She wanted her daughter well. And she's crying out and crying out. And what do the disciples say? Send her away. Send her away. One of the things we learned this weekend at the men's study is that the, the disciples want to send her away because they, they see this woman as bothersome. They're trying to keep a low profile. We don't want everybody to know that Jesus is here. Send her away. And, and one of the things that we need to remember is that the disciples, remember I keep telling you all the humanity of the disciples, they're justified, okay? But they have not received what? Power of the Holy Spirit. That's why you get the reactions you get. Because they're doing it in their own will. And it's tiresome. When you're trying to, to live the, the, the life of Jesus Christ in your own will, it will wear you out. Because you need to be connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why they say, send her away. And, and um, you know, that, that's a, an important thing because when you think about the disciples, they had already left everything, right? They, they, they had already, uh, to follow Jesus, they, they had mission trips already. One of them walked on water. And they preached and yet... Send her away. Because they're doing it in their own strength. And, and so we need to remember that. It's like at the end of the day, we, when we try to, to live this faith in our own strength, this is what happens in Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. It says, Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. Did you get that? Which ones are going to fall? All. 
Every one of them. They scattered. They took off. Remember, he's in the garden and he says, can you just stay awake and pray? Because it's in their strength. And you see, when we get to the book of Acts and you get to Acts chapter 1 and you see this amazing transformation happen when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And then the message starts to go out. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit. So we need to remember that. And so when this woman comes, she's, she's begging Jesus. And, and, and it says, because she came and knelt before Him, saying, Lord, help me. She uses the proper term, Lord. This is a Gentile woman and she calls Him Lord. She's not arguing over who He is. She's like, I, I, that's Lord. She knows. She's heard of, of, of what Jesus has done. And in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 5, it says, And not only that, but we also uh, glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance, and perseverance uh, and character, and character and hope. And now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given, given to us. She has perseverance. She's not quitting. Here are the disciples are saying, send her away. And she's lamenting and crying out. Help my daughter. Lord, help my daughter. Right? That's perseverance. Do you understand? Like when you go through trials and you go through suffering and you go through these tribulations that you go through in life, a lot of that is to do with the branch being pruned. In order to produce more grapes, the, the vine's got to be cut back. Um, that's one of the things that, that Pastor Bill told us. He, you know, because the, the church that they're at is in the, in the wine country in California. He says, and when they do the, uh, man, two trains, we're... I was thinking in my head, we better not have an over and under how many trains are going by <laughs> every day. Um, but one of the things he said is when they, when they, when they take down and, and, and pull the, the grapes and they smash them and do what they do, he said the whole area smells like, like just this fragrant smell uh, uh, in, in the wine country in California. But he was talking about how the they would have to cut the branches back. And he goes, and when they, the, what they do is in order to get more shoots and more grapes out, they have to cut it all the way back. And he goes, and when they cut it back, it looks like they've killed the plant. So imagine that as us as believers. So when you go through trials and you go through suffering and you go through tribulation, it is to grow you. Right? Not a lot of us want to do that. But it's to produce more fruit in your life and and so i love this because this woman she doesn't quit she doesn't quit and 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 it's gonna we're gonna see it as she uh begins to beg jesus here in our next point in verse 26 it says now the woman was a gentile uh syrophoenician by birth and she begged him to cast the demon out of her door so syrophoenician was actually uh half phoenician and half Syri uh, syrian and so they, they did practice idol worship. It was a big thing there. Uh, sacrifice of children, uh, the whole nine yards. They, they, they practiced it all there. Colossians chapter 3, verse 11 says, Here, here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised or, and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. So who is the gospel for? Everyone. Everyone. And, and so God doesn't play favorites. And, and we're going to see that as we, as we look into the Scripture. Because uh, the woman begins to, to, to cry out to Christ and, and, and lamenting and, and begging. And, and she's, she's in an area where there's nothing but dead religion. Right? She's not, it's not like where the Jews are at. They're in a, in a pagan culture. And we're seeing more of that in our, in our culture today and all. But that's where we have to stand firm and, 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 and be Christ-like. And, 
And one of the things I love is that she, for her, it's, she's not even supposed to talk to him because she's a woman. Remember, they call him what? Rabbi. So she wasn't even, a woman's not supposed to talk to a rabbi. So she, and then on top of it, she's a Gentile. That's how bad she needs to talk to Jesus. She's begging. She knelt before him. And, and so, this is what I love about these verses. But how did she hear about Jesus healing people that are demon-possessed? She's the furthest away. This is the furthest away that Jesus has been from Jerusalem, from the, the, the Sea of Galilee. This is the furthest away. And, and we know back in Mark chapter 21, and, and we won't go through the whole thing, in Mark chapter 21 it says, uh, in verse 23 it says, in verse chapter 1 it says, and immediately there was uh, in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have uh, you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you become to uh, come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him and saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they, all, they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, What is this? And new teaching of authority. He commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. And at once his fame spread throughout uh, throughout uh, everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. So word of mouth started. This is the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And word of mouth is already spreading. And then we also know, we, we talked about it in Mark chapter 5, there was the unclean spirit, the, the, the legion. Remember the legion and the legion, they couldn't chain them. They would try to chain them up and he would break the chains. They put them on the outskirts of town where the tombs were. And they, he was scaring the whole town. And Jesus heals them. And, and I love the verse. And, and it says that uh, in verse 8, For he was saying to him, Come out, the man, for an unclean spirit. And one of the things that we see in that is that in this moment, Jesus, this possessed demon-possessed man, is now clothed because he was unclothed. And, and he has clothes on and he was in his right mind. And yet they were afraid. And they say, Jesus, you got to go. And this guy wants to come with Jesus. And, and Jesus does this. And this is very important because this is how the word is going out. And he did not permit him to, uh, but to say to him in Mark chapter 5, verse 19, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And when he went out to begin to proclaim to the capitalists how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone marveled. So he goes out, and now the word's going out about Jesus, and it's gotten to the Syrophoenician woman that's begging for her daughter's uh, for a daughter to be healed. So she's heard it. And the one thing that you need to take from this is that this woman does not stop begging. Right? How quickly do we give up on our prayers? Or we say, hey, we need to pray for that. And we pray for it one time and that's it. Right? So prayer. Remember this. Prayer is, is for us. It's a partnership that God allows us to have. And what I mean by that is it is an intimate time and God uses it to give us confidence when we seek Him. Because He answers the prayers. Not all the time does he do. I mean, sometimes it's yes, no, or not right now. Right? But it's an intimate time that we're supposed to spend with God. It's, it's in that verse in John 15, 7. It says, if you abide in me and my, in, my, in my words abide in you, ask. See, this is the part we forget. What do we tell everybody? Oh, you've got to abide in Christ. But we forget that part. Ask whatever you wish. And it will be done. You need to be praying. It doesn't mean that you just ask for stuff. It means when your heart aligns with what God's heart is, that's when the Lord moves. And she keeps asking. And that's one of the things I love in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. It says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, 
and you will find, knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you, if his son has asked for a piece of bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If, if then you who are evil uh, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give things to those who ask him? So prayer is a, a, an opportunity for us to seek God and to spend that time in intimate relationship. It's a dialogue. It goes both ways. Right? And, and so we need, to, we need to understand that we need to keep asking. And that's what this lady is doing. She's, she hasn't stopped asking. And I love what Jesus says because when the disciples tell her uh, send her away. Uh, Jesus says this in Matthew 15, verse 24. He answered, I was, sent, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's going to explain what we're going to read next. That's why I read you that. Because what we read next is a lot of liberal theologians have called Jesus a racist based upon the next scripture. There's a lot of, a lot of new stuff that's being taught today based upon the scripture. Because it says, and he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And so they've taken this verse and they twisted it. But if you get the verse from Matthew 15, verse 24, you know that the children are referring to the Jews. That's why he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of his, the house of Israel. That's what he's there for. But, you know, one of the things that I love is the gospel is for everyone. And we know that in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, people will say that the, the word dog is talking about a wild dog. It uses the, the terminology for dog that you find in the dictionary. That's what they're using. But that's not the word in the Greek. The word in the Greek actually means little puppy. It's like a child's dog, a little puppy. Underneath, it, any of us have had dogs. Y'all know when you have a dog, I had a, I had a basset hound. We never had to sweep the floors. She, whatever the kids dropped on the floors, anybody who's had kids in high chairs, <laughs> know that the, most of the food ends up on the floor and that dog would clean everything up it, there was nothing left and the word that jesus is using is 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 meaning little puppy and it has nothing to do with her he's he's using this as an image of hey this is what this is what it's going to be it's going to be the israelites first and and so he's trying to explain it to her in that way but he's also testing her faith because most people would have turned away and said, well, why are you calling me a dog? Right? That would have been the first thing out of the mouth. Philippians chapter 3, verse 2 says, look out for the dogs, look out for the uh, evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. Same word that Jesus uses, the same word used in that verse in Philippians, it means little dogs. And, and they used it as a term to consider it a... Someone who was unclean, a Gentile, or a, uh, a, a false teacher, right? That's what the Jews would use as that term. But she, she hits him back, and, she, uh, and he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So again, it's just that example of, of it's, what's happened today is people are saying, uh, referring to this Canaanite woman as a dog, as they're, they're saying that's a racial slur. This is what's being taught today. Uh, it, does it sound like the culture? Fits the narrative, right? But you need, to, you need to actually understand that the Gentile, he was having compassion on her and speaking to her, and he was care, careful to remind her about, I'm here for what God has put me here for, which is I'm here for the Jews. That's why God has sent me here. But we know as we look at the last part here, as the woman answered Jesus and Jesus heals the child, we'll get more information on this. But she answered him, and this is very important. 
Did she take it as a racial slur? No, because what did she say? Yes, Lord. Now, a small note there, just and y'all probably heard this before. He's not your Lord if you say no, Lord. Okay? He's not your Lord if you say no, Lord. But yes, Lord, let yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Yes, Lord, and I love that. And she, she understood uh, the terminology that was being used that Jesus had shared. And she uses it back at Him. Right? She, she uses the same term for little dog. So she wasn't offended. She wasn't offended. She, she understood that she was unworthy because she was a Gentile. She understood because the Jews would have had nothing to do with her, but yet Jesus is talking to her. If Jesus was racially motivated, do you think He would have ever had the conversation? What would He have done? He would have said, go ahead and send her away. But that's not what He did. And so we need to be careful of this new progressive teaching that's out there. Because I'm telling you about it because your kids are going to be dealing with it. Okay? Because there are pastors that are starting to teach this stuff. Because it fits the narrative of the culture. And it makes the church grow. And they're going with it. And we have to stick to what the Scripture says. We don't, we don't dictate the context of Scripture. Scripture does that because the context is king. And that's what we need to remember. But he, I, he loves, he was, you know, uh, he, he, she says, yes, Lord. And, and you know, it, one of the things I love is her humbleness and the faith that she's submitting saying, yes, Lord, that she's coming in humility and saying that I, I just, I'm here to help my daughter. Right? She's there for that. And in verse 29, and, it said to, uh, and he said to her, for this statement you may go your way, the demon has left your daughter. Now this is very familiar because this happens to the Roman centurion too as well. Right? It's instantaneous. And the Roman centurion was also what? A Gentile. So, Jesus is not against Gentiles. He'll, he's helping the Gentiles as well. He's teaching the disciples that they're clean as well. It's just not their time for the Gospel. Jerusalem's time. They need it. And then they're going to go out and share the Gospel with everyone. And in Matthew chapter 8, verses 15 through 13, and it says, When he had, the, had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, uh, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will, uh, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy. Again, he's using the word what? He's a Gentile. And he calls him what? Lord. The, the scribes and the Pharisees didn't even do that. I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. And this is very important. Jesus says in verse 10, uh, when Jesus heard this, he was marveled and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. And she took, she, she, you know, this is the same thing the Roman centurion. She took the promise that Jesus said, your daughter's healed. And she took that promise. She took it. Jesus was testing her faith is what He was doing. And it may seem like harsh words, but remember the same words He does at the woman at the well. Uh, this is not your, your husband that you're living with. Because you've had how many? Now most people would have been offended. How dare you? And walk away. But Jesus is testing their faith. He's, he, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees weren't seeing this. They were missing it. And here the Gentiles are, are figuring it out. That's why when we talk about, you know, we, we talk about this crazy guy with the long hair coming and sharing the gospel. And Lord, let me let, let you know, I, there, I, we've been dealing with stuff that you wouldn't believe. He, 
He's going to reach people that you would never reach. I had one, one pastor tell me, oh, I can, I, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to explain that to the church, you know, because he's from California. He's got long hair. And every picture I saw of Jesus, he had long hair. Maybe not probably what we think it is in the pictures we, you know, but it's probably curly and stuff, man. But it was like, come on. You know, God uses all of us to share the gospel. And so one of the biggest things that, you know, as we look at these verses is like he, you know, the demon has left her. It was that faith that she had. And, and, and I love the fact that, you know, I love the fact that, that it's a reminder to us that the gospel is supposed to go out to everybody. You don't pick and choose who you share the gospel with. God does. You know, God wants everyone to, to come to know faith, but they have free will. It's their decision, you know, and that's, that's what gets a lot of us in trouble. And that's why it took me 39 years. It was my free, my free will, my, my dumb decisions. Before the Lord finally just, I just looked at the destruction behind me and was like, that was all me. That was my sin, my decisions, my way. And Lord, I don't want to do it like that no more. And here's this, this lady that she's, she's, she could be rejected. She, you know, you can imagine the battle that's going on in her head. But she didn't care because her daughter was needing healing. And see what I'm talking about, the trials and the, the tribulations and the sufferings we go through is to move you to God sometimes. It's to bring you closer. To strengthen the relationship. And, and that's what we get here. And it says, And when she went home and found the child lying in the bed, the demon, and the demon gone. So as Jesus said it, it was instantaneous and, and the demon left her. And Jesus had, had come for His own people and the house of Israel, but they're going to reject Him. They're going to reject Him. So the bread of heaven was rejected and thrown away, and now who's going to receive it? The Gentiles. And if we continue to keep rejecting it, you're going to miss it. Right? You could be just like those disciples saying, no, not that person. Right? They, they don't deserve to, to, to know Jesus. We, we got to be very careful with that. When the Holy Spirit puts something on your heart to share with somebody, you need to do that. You need to step out in faith and do that. Okay? Don't go, okay, no, nah, I don't know, man. I can't, not, not with that person. I couldn't share the gospel with them. Don't do that. Don't do that. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You know, don't be, don't be afraid to just say hi to people, talk to people. You're in a small town. Okay, it's not like San Antonio where everybody's in a hunt going 150 miles a minute. You're in Divine, you're in Lytle, you're in Natal, you're in Hondo. People wave at you. I, I don't know how many people I was, sitting, I was standing out talking to the guy painting across the street. Me and him were talking. We were waving to everybody coming. Because that's what you do in a small town. At least that's what you're supposed to do. And through those conversations that you have, eventually you can share the gospel with people. Same thing with the Cactus Fest. That's what that's for. We're going to introduce ourselves to the community. There's a church here. If you want to come to church, it's a casual church. We would love to have you. If you don't want to come to church, I understand. But you've been invited, right? And so we, we, need, to, we need not to... That's the one thing that, that Jesus is trying to show the disciples. The food was unclean, but now it's clean. The Gentiles were unclean, but now they're clean. He's trying to show the disciples that's what's happening in this chapter. Like things are going to change because I'm not going to be here. And you're going to have to go out and, and share. So application real quick uh, and we'll close it up here. Jesus cannot be hidden and neither should, should Christ be hidden in you. Okay? What I mean by that is God has not called 
any of y'all to be the 007, uh, um, you're not called to be some, some uh, born ag you know, agent of Christ. You're not, that's not you. Okay, what I mean by that is like people should know that you're a believer. Okay, and, and, and here's a great way to start. Uh, do people know you're a believer in your family? And if you go no, then you need to, there's some work that needs to be done. You need to ask the Lord to help you with that. If you go to, to uh, do, do my co-workers know, then you need, might need to be praying about that so that they would come and know that. Right? I was going to say your spouse. If your spouse don't know, then Lord help you. Right? <laughs> You need more. We need to lay hands on you after service is what we need to do. Uh, second, uh, is there anyone that you believe is unsavable? Right? Because the disciples did. Send her away. Right? And we can do that, so we need to be careful. Be very careful when you're meeting somebody for the first time or you're going, oh man, not that person. Or, you know, I don't know if I could talk to them, or I don't know if I... That's all the, that's all the enemy in your head. Because if the Holy Spirit's saying you need to go talk to them, just go talk to them. Okay? Just go talk to them. And, and so, I love that, that He did that. And lastly, how much does your, your problem mean to you? And so, if you encountered something in your life, or you're encountering something in your life at this moment, and you're saying... I need to keep seeking God. Just like this lady, lamenting, crying out, in, in passion of, of saying, Lord, I need You. Right? That's what we need. And, and, and that's what that verse is in Matthew chapter 7. And it says uh, in verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. So keep knocking. Don't give up on that. You know, at the, at the end of the day, that's one of the things that we've, we, we've seen and we'll see throughout the Scripture is people that are so desperate for God. They'll do. They'll remember the, they, they brought their friend to the hole of the roof just to save their friend, to, to see him healed. It's the faith that people have. The father that cries out to save his daughter that died. You're he's... It's the prayer, the crying out, and Jesus saves. We can't, we can't stop doing that. And, and at the end of the day, that's why prayer is such an important thing. In our lives, and, 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 and man, when you're going through something, and you're... Don't give up. That's what, that's what church is. It's like, hey, I need you to pray with me. Can you pray with me? I have this thing going on and, and I don't know like what Teresa's mom right now. She's going, we got to take her Monday. And all they found water on her brain. And they know that she has, you know, something going on there. And it's like we're praying. We don't know what it is. I mean, but we, I'm telling you so y'all can start praying for her because Teresa's been going through it. They've already lost their father. And went through 11 years of uh, dementia. Pick's disease. This was, it was a hard 11 years. Not only for the mom, but for the five kids. And now the mom's sick. People are going through stuff, man. Um, and we can't stop praying. And sometimes, I, I, I said this before, I was telling the guys this at the men's retreat, one of the things I can't stand is when people walk into a church and just, everything's great. And they walk out the church and they're fighting. And the house is in chaos. It's like being honest, man, and ask, ask people to come alongside of you and pray. You're not in this alone. That's why, that's why God, God has given us the church for fellowship. Right? And for us to, to knock together. Because let me tell you, man, you, you got you to gotta just keep just keep knocking. 
And then if you got to get two people, you get everybody, man. Hey, can y'all start knocking with me? Because my daughter is sick right now. You get put in a desperate situation, you'll be on your knees seeking Jesus. Let me tell you that. Right? And, and, and you know, all of us are believers in this room. And, and you know, <laughs> we probably have all been there at a time or two. And if any of you have had kids, you've been there when your kids get really sick. That one had to have a, a spinal tap done when he was six or seven. Because they thought he had meningitis. Did that bring me to the Lord? No. I look back at my life and I'm like, there were so many instances where God was trying to reach me, but I was being such a knucklehead. But I was crying out to God, even though I wasn't following Him. So, I mean, think about, you know, there are people in your life that need prayer. Uh, people in the church that need prayer. Probably people at your work that you need to pray for. If somebody's always angry at work, maybe you need to pray for them, right? Ask God to start softening their heart. Because usually when somebody's angry, something's going on. Something's happening. There's a stress or something at the house. Something's happening with the kids or something. And it's a great way to share the gospel, to share your faith. It's a great way to pray with somebody because that's how you share your faith. Can I pray with you? So, you know, take those opportunities where they come. A wonderful opportunity here, especially right before the Cactus Fest. Everyone that comes, every child that comes through there is an opportunity for us to love on them and love on the parents. And if they come to church, great. If they don't, great. We got to love on them the time that we had them. But we're serving the community. We're, we're doing what God has called us to do. It's an opportunity for us to do that. So let's go ahead and close out in prayer. And we'll call it a day. Father God, we thank you so much for today. Uh, I do pray and lift up for us on his birthday, Lord. Uh, bless him with just a wonderful day with his family. And, his, uh, and, and just give him just a, each one of us, Lord, a, a day of rest, a day of, of, of just being able to, uh, to spend time with loved ones and 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 lord we do pray for those needs i do pray for Teresa's mom and and just the test that's going to be done just pray for that and the stress that it's bringing on the five kids for uh from ronnie and and uh jose and tommy and lewis and and Teresa. um we just ask lord that you just continue to to be with each of them I, i'm sure we all have parents that are uh, as they get older that uh, are in need of care and I know I think of my mom back in Georgia and the things that she goes through and uh, but we just ask and lift up uh, that to you Lord and we pray for the pray for the other needs of the church here uh, there's probably things that are on each of our hearts right now we were probably thinking of someone that needs the gospel uh, maybe there was a, a, an opportunity where we go man I was that secret agent Christian at that time uh, and and Lord help us to not be hidden Allow your light to shine through us and allow us to shine in a way that brings glory to you, Lord. Uh, we thank you so much for all that you're doing. And we just ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless y'all. I will see y'all on Wednesday night. We'll be in Daniel chapter 3 at 7 p.m. And then Thursday, if the guys can be here around 545 uh, the, you'll see the, the Burgundy van out there. And then we'll drive. We just got to go like maybe five minutes to the storage supply place over here grab everything and then we're just going to bring it back here and we'll be done so it should take about an hour and also and then sunday next sunday uh, after the cactus fest we'll kind of help put all that stuff back whoever's available um and and then just the cactus fest on saturday um if you can't serve it's okay i get it but come by you know at least come by and say hi and all if you can and and at the same time you know it's a great let people know that the cactus fest is going on it's a great time for uh for family to come together and and there'll there'll be music uh that's free and from talking to marcus they'll have from country to tejano from 70s music to to more 90s i got an i think a group that does 90s stuff and and so it's a little bit of everything 
as far as the music is is there so hopefully y'all can make it out and and come see us so god bless y'all uh if you need to get a hold of me calvarydivine.org online god bless